The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Market Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN Tuesday morning, 9.06 a.m. We got about 24 minutes till the start of trading for the day and markets just barely clinging on to positive territory right now. You get the Russell up by less than one point, up by half a point right now on the Russell 2226. Russell's given up 15 points from the overnight highs. The Dow hanging on to gains up 11 points right now, 34,267. We we're up to 34,000. 420. So you're talking about 150 points the Dow has given up, but still barely in the positive by 11 points. Tech stocks positive by 55. That's about four tenths percent in the green for the NASDAQ 100. And the S&Ps positive by two by the slightest margin. We've given up about 20 points now in the S&Ps since that high at about 3 a.m. Eastern time. You jump over to Europe. DAX is flat. FTSE barely positive by about a quarter percent. Over in Asia, Nikkei up 2% that I have at Shanghai up about 3 tenths percent. Uh, yes, those are the numbers. And we'll jump to commodities. Crude, quite the volatility of the upside. You put crude on a daily, right? The highs that we're gunning for, March 8th, 67.98, bumping right up against that level. This morning, we got above $70 briefly. Excuse me, we got above $67. Got above $67 briefly, 67.02. You're trading 66.26, but quite an uptrend, really, since April 5th. Look where we were since April 5th. You're talking about even in the last six weeks, you've had crude go from a low of 57. We're up $9 just in the last six weeks from that price level to 66.23. Gold is up a bit, up about $5. 1872 gold on the daily will back things up a little bit further to see that full run gold covid lows of about 1450 we make it to 2089 gold bounce bounces right on that 618 double taps that area from 1700 or so where we bounce we're at 1872 the trend higher in gold this morning and notes and bonds right now will jump over that's uh Yes, that is a five-year. Yes, that is a five-year daily. If you want to see a longer-term trend, let's put it on a weekly to make it a little bit simpler to see the lows in that area. This is the 10-year. Interesting that we're chopping around right at the 382. Also interesting that area in the 10-year, also correlating to the area in terms of an area of resistance. You back it up to September of 2019, accelerate through that area to the highs of COVID of 140.24. You've now pulled back to the 382, that area about 131.24 on my chart from the full run that you got. And we're chopping around that area. And again, right where you were in terms of the highs of 2019. Okay, back to a 15-minute bars. Let's jump around to some of the stocks with earnings. I pulled up the charts briefly in the pre-market, in the 9 o'clock update. The th three big ones today, all trading positive. Walmart, let's kick it off with. Earnings beat estimates as retailers sees robust growth in grocery and online sales. So this is their first quarter earnings. Beat expectations. Sales got a lift from strong grocery and e-commerce, two big areas for Walmart raised its guidance for the fiscal year. That's putting a little bit of a bid into it. And let's get into the numbers. Uh, earnings per share, buck 69 versus a buck 21. How about the revenue beat? Some of these companies just staggering beats in a big way. Revenue, 138.31 billion versus 131 point nine seven so let's call that 132 they beat by about 6.3 billion dollars of revenue in 90 days staggering number when you look at even on a daily basis in the quarter net income 2.73 billion and they look at, I mean, less than the year earlier but of course you're dealing with more expenses maybe in this uh, COVID environment Excluding items, that's where you get the $1.69 a share. Market was looking for $1.21. Same store sales grew by 6%. Staggering when you think about same store sales. Walmart really reaching most of their consumers within an area of a Walmart, right? If you weren't shopping at Walmart last year, are you shopping at Walmart this year? Well, 6% more are, which is staggering when you think about their reach already 365 days ago. Market was looking for 0.9% increase in same store sales. The same store sales numbers at some of these companies. We're going to pull up Home Depot next. Staggering beat. Staggering. 
Wait till you see that one. Uh, the company said the sales got a lift from grocery sales as it gained market share. Transactions declined by 3.2%. Check this one out. But average ticket growth increased by almost 10%. So people shopping greater purchases, bigger purchases, right? Maybe you're stocking up more. Maybe you have the ability to, you know, maybe, maybe our life changes during COVID uh, caused us to make less trips to the grocery store and stock up more when we do. That's what's happening at Walmart. The numbers are right there. Transactions declining by more than 3%. Average ticket sales, ticket sales growing by almost 10%. Same store sales for Sam's Club jumped 7.2%, excluding fuel. More than the 1.2 the market was looking for. Just beats all over the place. International sales, 27.3 billion. They have a drop compared to last year due to the company divesting of its global business, its e-commerce sales. How about that one? Increased by 49% in that segment, however. Company recently sold Asda, the British supermarket chain, Walmart shares this morning. I mean, how about, you know, just going over it, right? Big numbers all across the board. You got Walmart pushing almost 145 this morning. Now, we have some Walmart in my newsletter, Rocket Equities and Options. Uh, where this area is, interesting, look at this gap, 144.50. Okay, is the gap this had open? I've been talking about need to accelerate through this area. You'd love to see it do it with strength. And guess what, folks? We're going to do it today. You got to open 144.50 is the price level. You look at where we were this morning. We were already above that area. So technically, pre market, you've pushed that gap. We'll see how it reacts on the open. But Walmart right now, you're up about $5 coming into the opening bell on their beat on earnings this morning. Okay, let's jump to Home Depot next. Home Depot, positive, not by as much as home uh, Walmart, giving back some of those gains, but still up by about $4. You put this thing on the daily. I mean, geez, Home Depot and Lowe's since the beginning of March, staggering the run that they've had. I mean, you can't overstate quite a run that has. Uh, in terms of the run from March 5th to April 19th, folks, that's like six weeks. I mean, count it with me. How many red bars? One, two, three, four, five. And look how tiny those red bars are. Over six weeks of trading, practically. You just don't see that often. Uh, and then it pushes to 345. We've given back some of it. So a lot of those gains priced in, probably rightfully so, for Walmart, uh, excuse me, Home Depot hits 345. This morning, we're going to open 324. Now, Home Depot, you want to see some staggering numbers as well. Home Depot numbers, how about this? Sales jump 32.7%. Customers rang up bigger purchases. You see in the theme here, folks? Um, people not afraid. Maybe it's some of those pent-up savings that they have. Excuse me. Uh, bigger purchases, larger purchases. Maybe there's some pent-up demand. You're going to Home Depot, you're grabbing a few things, right? You've been putting off some things maybe, especially at Walmart. Maybe you're putting off some things. Uh, maybe you're buying more clothes. You're buying whatever it is. Bigger purchases, less transactions. Getting into Home Depot numbers, big numbers. Earnings, 386 versus 308. Revenue, they beat by 2.5 billion about, 37.5 versus 34.96. Net sales rose 32.7% to 37.5 billion. Now they were already anticipating quite a rise. Uh, BDA expectations. How about same store sales surging 31% for the quarter? Right, now that's benchmarked versus quite a number when you back it up to the quarter that they're compared to a year ago. Keep that in mind. First quarter, the retail is facing a year-over-year -year com comps to its business during lockdowns. A year ago, its first quarter same-store sales grew 6.4%. So big numbers still. For the company's first quarter, 447 million customer transactions up almost 20% in the average ticket, up than 10%. They're growing customer transactions. Walmart, seeing that number decrease a bit, housing market looks to be stronger than ever. Stay tuned, folks. Come back, talk to other stocks next. Week. Right back. Golden ratios give shape to everything in our world, represented in the Fibonacci sequence. These special numbers define the patterns that make up our universe. Not even markets can escape the omnipotence of these ratios. Larry Pesavento is a 45-year market veteran who has published nearly a dozen books on the powerful patterns we find in nature and their relationships with the ever-elusive markets. Larry's newsletter, Fibonacci 24-7, will teach you to harness the power of these natural golden ratios in order to create successful trades. Fibonacci 24-7 is designed to teach the tools you need to identify and act on these undeniable and reoccurring patterns. Sign up for Larry's newsletter, Fibonacci 24-7, and you will also receive free access to his trading webinar, Trading Strong Trending Markets. Try out Larry's newsletter risk-free 
All of TFNN's newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. Hey there, I'm Andy Arbertine with Tiger Precious Metals and Stones. Whether you're looking to buy and sell precious metals or trying to find the perfect diamond ring, I'm here to help. I have over 15 years of experience with diamonds and precious metals. You can call me directly at 727-329-8245 and I will personally answer any questions you have and help you find exactly what you're looking for. I will be your personal concierge in the metal and stone business. Give me a call today, 727-329-8245. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Well, welcome back, folks. We have the S&Ps up by two points right now. NASDAQ 100 up by 47. The Dow barely positive by four points. And the Russell futures actually ticking negative as we speak. Markets giving back some of the gains we had overnight. Let's jump over to our man, Kevin Hinks. Folks, every trading day, 11 a.m. Eastern Time, live on Tiger TV, on the TD Ameritrade Network, Fast Market. Kevin Hinks, Alex Coffey, and the team talking about hypothetical trades in the option market. we got a big week of retail earnings going on. Kevin Hinks, good morning. Good morning, Tommy O'Brien. Yeah, we're off to a great start in terms of retail. You've got Home Depot up, you've got Macy's up, and you've got Walmart all up pre-market on really good earnings. So, so far, so good in terms of retail. Uh, some of the data this morning, now, remember, Tommy, all the data we're getting th th this week, there's no real top six data points that we're getting. So, housing starts to term, it's a little bit soft, coming off the historically high numbers from a month ago. Red Book was 12.6%. That's a nice, solid number, a little off last week, but still historically high. But that being said, uh, stocks are uh, stumbling out of the gate here. Again, they're up. They're all up. They're all green. The Russell's unchanged. But, uh, you know, we'll see how this day turns out. I mean... It is interesting. You know, you wake up more, uh, Kevin, we got, you know, still 10 minutes, still the opening bell, right? You look up, you say, ah, markets, they're barely in the positive. We got some great news, man. We'll get, I mean, some of the same store sales numbers, some of the beats, Walmart just staggering, Home Depot just absolutely percentage wise, you know, staggering same store sales, um, growing it. You get the market up by two points. But as you mentioned, we've given up now, Kevin. You're talking about 20 points in the S&Ps from the highs we had overnight. NASDAQ 100, we were as high as above 13,000. 420, so 70 points, give or take, but just staggering numbers. Now, the earnings season continues. We got Home Depot, Macy's, Walmart this morning. Next, uh, tomorrow, I believe we got Lowe's, Target, TJ Maxx, uh, L Brands after the close. It continues all week. What are you guys talking about on the program coming up at 11 o'clock today, Kevin? Well, our uh, three names, two of them you already mentioned. Uh, the first one, Take Two Interactive. That's the video nice. game player. And then we'll go Target. Uh, like Folio will do a presentation on Target, and then Lowe's, the Home Depot competitor. Let's see if they can keep pace with their major competitor, Home Depot. So, yeah, three good names today, Tommy. 
I was thinking, Kevin, it is interesting, right, when you go second, uh, as in you got, you know, two huge giants, Home Depot and Walmart, and then you have the kind of their smaller but still great competitors in Lowe's and Target, uh, along with Macy's, TJ Maxx, you mentioned it, but it's interesting when you go second and, you know, you, you see some of these numbers they come out with, like Home Depot, of course. Now, Home Depot, I just talked about the run we had, Kevin, from March 5th all the way, really, without even, you know, to April 16th. Kevin, we had, I got the chart up here on the Thinker Swim platform. So I got the red bar from March 5th in Home Depot. Uh, excuse me, the green bar, we were trading at a low on that day at 246. You trade up to April 19th of 328. And Kevin, over that time, I have five red bars of that course from, eight, from uh, March 5th to April 19th in this stock. And we're trading right at that level. Uh, point being, expectations pretty high, especially when a company like that beats you still trade higher. You have lows this morning, only up by about a dollar. They had their own big run from where we were on March 5th to the runs we've had. But uh, expectations even building for these companies to come in after the line. You know, we're seeing them trade up a little bit. How do you look at that on an equity, like let's say a Lowe's? And I know you guys are going to talk about it. I'm going to be listening, man, because those are some great equities coming out. Uh, what do you look at when you see the expectation build? Obviously, we're a little bit higher this morning. You got Lowe's up about a dollar fifty to two dollars with a bid ask above the one ninety four. Uh, what do you look towards as you see some of those? The expectations, whether they build higher or lower, when they're coming in second after a company so similar to what they're doing? Yeah, well, you know, sectors trade together, right? When the first financials come out uh you know the second week of, of earnings they, they all move together and home depot you know lows will probably be higher today based on home depot but you know that should affect some of the movement that you'll get later in lows because some of it's already built in i mean now the expectations will be for lows to do better so pre-market you know what let, let's see where Lowe's is trading pre-market. I'm sure they're higher. I think you said it was up a dollar. Let, let me just call it up. Yeah, they're about a dollar higher uh, than they were last night. So, you know, these stocks are really competitive. And actually, you can make the case that Lowe's has been doing slightly better, cutting into Home Depot's, um, you know, gains. They actually had higher, you know, net sales uh, last quarter than Home Depot. So we'll see how this, you know, they've sold off together. The charts are eerily similar. Marvin Ellison, the CEO of Lowe's, used to work at Home Depot. So a lot of similarities here. So the, these competitors are really, really a fun story to watch, Tommy. It is interesting in my own head, Kevin, you talk about whether it's a Home Depot compared to Lowe's or kind of a Walmart compared to Target. Um, of course, completely different sectors uh, in some matter in terms of the housing versus just straight out retail. But some of these smaller companies and Target's a behemoth, man, but it is a smaller company compared to Walmart. Uh, they don't have a competitive advantage at all. But I was talking to my dad recently and saying, you know, now that everything is so accessible online, right, you don't need that same type of footprint, maybe, or the physical store. You just need the ability to deliver those products or the process or the infrastructure. And that's why I think in my own head, you've seen whether Target kind of catching up and quite a chart for, for Target going from under 100 to 220 and lows, man, going from a $60 low to 215. Um, even pre-COVID, Kevin, you were trading at about 120 coming in, you know, 15 months ago or so, and you're trading at 200 on these equities it's interesting to see as we transition some of these companies may be catching up to the big leaders of walmart and home depot uh well we look forward to the show kevin big week of retail and yeah you can't overstate some of these numbers i think home depot before i let you go man because i know you guys are gonna be talking about walmart how about net sales rising 32.7 percent kevin and how about this one they had transactions up 20 percent almost from last year and every transaction up 10.3 percent kevin for home depot for their numbers last week that's quite an expectation for lowe's coming into their numbers tomorrow morning wouldn't you say in the stores spending more money in the stores that's a pretty good combination of problems for a retailer to have that one caught me off guard, man, because in comparison, Walmart actually had uh, a decrease uh, by 3.2 percent for transactions. But for that company, they increased ticket growth by almost 10 percent as well. But not the same when you talk about Home Depot, man, growing each side of it. Well, Kevin, we look forward to the discussion as always, man. We look forward to the breakdown of those equities. What would you say? Take two, lows and target, correct? Exactly. The big three, man. We look forward to it. As always, Kevin, have a great day, man. We'll be watching at 11 o'clock, and we'll talk to you tomorrow.
Thanks for having me on, Tommy. Have a great day. My pleasure, man. Folks, tune in if you haven't. It's such a phenomenal show. I try and catch it every single day the way Kevin, Alex Coffey, and the team break down hypothetical trades. They show you how they're managing those trades. I've learned a lot personally from that program. I encourage you to check it out if you haven't already. And with that, folks, we got four minutes to go until the open market's clinging on to positive territory. We'll talk about some of those equities. We'll take a look at Lowe's, Target, Take to TJ Maxx, also out before the open tomorrow. And after the close tomorrow, we get Cisco and L Brands as well. We'll take a look at those. Right now, back into the short-term action, market's giving back some of it. You even see lows, right, giving back some of the gains it had pre-market. S&P's clinging on to gains by about two points right now. And the Russell, barely positive by one. We'll jump over to the VIX as we come into this final break before the opening bell. VIX now back above 20. Stay tuned, folks. I'll be coming back in three minutes for the opening bell. Hi folks, this is Tom O'Brien. The printing presses are working 24 hours a day, seven days a week. The US deficit has risen 200% in one year with no end in sight. The markets are looking for an additional stimulus bill to get us through this once in a generation pandemic. There is no free lunch, folks. The more stimulus dollars put into the marketplace, the less your dollar's worth each and every day. This is the time to protect yourself with a portion of your portfolio in the metal market. The Gold Report comes out each Monday morning. I bisect and dissect the dollar. Silver, gold, the XAU, and the HUI. The Gold Report is a long-term hedge against the dilution of your buying power. The U.S. has put more than $6 trillion into the marketplace in the last six months, with more expected in the next few months. The market did and does need the stimulus, but it will have long-term implications on our buying power. The Gold Report comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee. Go to TFNN.com and order the Gold Report now. Protect your buying power. Order the Gold Report now. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We have markets open right now. We have the S&Ps catching a little bit of a bid on the open, up four points right now. NASDAQ 100 up 43, the Dow up 45, and the Russell up about two points, holding pretty steady to where we open the markets. Let's jump to Bitcoin, down $500, 43610 Watch out in that market. Crude holding up relatively well, giving up about a dollar against. But, man, you put this crude contract on a daily, right? 
that's quite an uptrend, folks, from uh, about $57 and change. Where was our low back in March? We were at a low of 57.25 on March 23rd. Just like that, we're trading above $67. Last couple days, look where we've traded from above 63 to 66.05 right now in crude. Gold contract holding well at 18.70, quite an uptrend as well. And let's jump over to Macy's this morning out with their numbers. Talk about an uptrend. Macy's, $6.00 back when we were trading in November before we had any type of idea in terms of efficacy of the vaccines, et cetera. This morning, we're pushing basically flat. Now, this is quite a head shaker, folks. Talk about some lofty expectations. I'm going to jump over to Macy's numbers in a moment. It doesn't get any bigger than, than how they kind of crushed it, in my opinion. We traded higher on the, on the pre-market, but just like that, we're negative. We are negative on the day for Macy's and check out these numbers, folks. Well, Macy's shares do not rise once once the market opens. They report a surprise profit and they hike their full year forecast. We'll break them down because they're big across the board here. So how about a 39 cent profit versus a loss of 41 cents is what the market was looking for. Revenue, they beat 4.71 billion versus versus 4.37 billion. They made a profit of 103 million or that 32 cents a share compared with a loss of 3.6 billion a year earlier. Not like that matters in the context of where they're going forward because hopefully that was an anomaly that we never see again. Excluding one-time charges uh, for impairment, restructuring, early retirement of debt, et cetera. That's where they get the 39 cents versus the 41. Net sales grew to 4.71 billion. It was 3.02 a year earlier. Mark was looking for 4.37. So last year, sales tumbled 45%. So in the latest period, comp sales rose 62.5%. Now that's versus a year earlier, but the estimate was for 45%. So yeah, it's gonna be a big number, but it's bigger than they thought. Sales were in part, now this is the part that really I think shows the most strength, but the market is really shaking it off this morning. Sales were boosted by the addition of new shoppers in part of course there's many things going on macy said it added 4.6 million customers during the quarter a 23 percent increase from the same period in 2019 those are the kind of comps you want to pay attention to okay 2019 a normal year 2020 not a normal year we're going to get back to a form of normal you want to compare it to a form of normal not the isolated obscure year that 2020 was in most situations, right? Everything is going to revert back to some form of normal. We're going to keep trends that are going to change that new normal, but it's not going to be like 2020 when things were just so away from any form of normal and how we were conducting our daily lives. So 4.6 million customers during the quarter, 23% increase from the same period in 2019, 47% of those new shoppers made online purchases Digital sales climbed 34% year over year and 32% from 2019 levels. E-commerce, more than a third of their net sales, a six percentage point drop from a year earlier. But again, a year earlier, you were only buying things online when Macy's stores were shut down and its only revenue stream was digital, right? That's a 13 percentage point improvement from the first quarter of 2019. I like the fact they're talking about the comps of 2019. Uh, big numbers there across the board, and they boosted their outlook. One of the most important things when a company comes out with earnings is tell me your outlook. Americans have recently showed signs that they're ready to get back to more normal shopping, sales and clothing. Accessories surged 727% in April from a year earlier. That's the U.S. Commerce Department. Now, I believe this is their CEO talking about, because we have in here, let's see, is this the one? Yeah, Macy's CEO, Jeff Gannett. Yes, it is. So jumping back said, and this is the biggest part of it in terms of economy too, robust sales gains aren't a short-term pop. So he's building some expectations there. Another reason why I'm surprised to see this pulling back. Um, Gannett said, cited continued strength in categories, including home, fine jewelry, watches, fragrance, luxury items, special occasion categories are improving as well. Um, Pre-pandemic lifestyle is coming back. It's what you like to see in a big retailer like Macy's. They're calling for net sales in fiscal 2021 of around 22 billion, right? They're giving themselves a little room on each side, around 22 billion. The prior number was around, even the high end was 20.75, right? Estimates will earn between a buck 71 and 212. Prior, they were looking for 40 to 90. I mean, I'm listing all these numbers so you can really see how some of these stocks are getting ahead of themselves. What was the market looking for from Macy's if you get all the numbers you just got and I just gave you, okay, and you trade lower by the tune of 1.6%? Well, folks, 
The reason why is because over the last six months, Macy's just tripled in price. That's why. That's what's going on. It has to be. There's no other explanation than what you're doing. Um, so keep that in mind as we go in and, and how we trade. Let's see how, how some of the other stocks are trading. Look at this. Home Depot. Negative on the day. What was the market looking for there? I mean, really what it's looking for is all the optimism is priced in. They know that that's coming to that degree. Excuse me. And, uh, you know, the, the risk really was to the downside is my interpretation on these equities. Uh, almost no upside potential. If you come in with the numbers that Home Depot did, if you come in with the numbers that Macy's did, boy, if Walmart is negative right now, then watch out, folks. Let's see. Okay, Walmart's still up 4% because they were a staggering beat to a big tune. Uh, still up 4%, up $5.38. Walmart actually accelerating higher on the open, pushing those highs, 144.75. Now, remember, I talked about it. We have some Walmart in my newsletter. Uh, if you'd like to try it out, folks, please. 30-day money-back guarantee on everything we do at TFNN. Uh, now, you're closing that gap that we have. You back things up to a daily. You're talking about a gap from their prior earnings, right? So you had to wait 90 days. And it was a little bit of a volatile 90 days. You go from 145, you trade down to almost 125, just like that. We get some stimulus. You come roaring back. The high there to close that gap intraday in terms of the low from that gap, as in the higher portion of that gap, the higher blue line, let's zoom it in so you can see, you're talking about basically the low prior to their earnings, as when you gapped lower, you're talking about 144.50, we're 20 cents away from that level right now, 144.30, talked about in a newsletter, that's how you want to see an equity close a gap, folks, you know, clear it all out, do it with some strength. I'm sure you'll get some volume today. It's 9.37 in the morning, and we almost got 4 million shares traded already. All of yesterday, you traded 6.5 million shares, okay? Uh, at least Walmart hanging on, but it is surprising. And boy, Lowe's, you got some expectations. If uh, Walmart comes in with their staggering numbers, they trade basically flat for the day to slightly lower. Lowe's even increased a bit as the market's going to be looking for some big numbers from them. They're up about three tenths percent. Now let's jump over to the analyze tab for Lowe's. You got $194 stock and the price then about a 5% move. $9.28, the move expected for Walmart, uh, excuse me, Lowe's tomorrow. And you get into uh, the week in terms of the implied volatility, more than a $10 move. So, you know, if you're looking at options, it's the reason why I love the program Fast Market at 11. Folks, they talk about implied volatility, right? You can set up hypothetical trades. I think your swim is a sponsor, TD Ameritrade, but I'm, I, you can say I'm biased, but I would use the program no matter what. I mean, when I'm building trades, when I'm, when I'm building those trades, folks, I'm using this Analyze tab, okay? I'm building some of the trades. This is what they do in the program. Then what I'm doing is I'm jumping over the risk profile, seeing my max loss, my max gain. They break it all down. Check it out at 11 o'clock. Low got about a $9 to $10 move price in for their earnings tomorrow morning. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back after the break. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate L. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. 
Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large-cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Shame on me, folks. I was muted the whole time. I apologize. I just got a call from my producer. Shame on me. Uh, okay, back to it. I'll do it again. Let's go. Amazon shares, because I was just talking. We're in a zone between 3,000 and 3,500 in that area on Amazon. Quite a consolidation on a three on a weekly, right? Clear as day, 3,000 to 3,500. If you ever get the run that you got from a low of 1626 to 3,500, so you're talking about $1,900, folks. We trade from March to, to August, the full run. If you ever get $1,900 again, as in you break and you match that leg, right? It could be, and it's a different form of an ABC, but an A point in the low, a B point, it's basically a leg run. You consolidate for a while. You ever make a similar run, $1,900 from $2,800. You're talking about $4,700 would be the price tag there. Um, and what I had talked about prior, I was talking about, where am I? How's that up there? I don't want that, no. I was talking about, yes, that Amazon, 
It was a Morgan Stanley uh, analyst, Brian Nowak. So he put a $4,500 price target on it. He said it could even go to 5 to 6 k over the next 12 months. Not outlandish. It seems outlandish, but folks, it hasn't split in forever, right? Apple doesn't seem outlandish because it split whatever it split. So it keeps itself down at $100 and change. Tesla, the same deal. We'll be talking about some crazy levels on Tesla for price right now if it had not split itself. Amazon trading just under $3,300, up about six tenths percent right now. Okay, what else we got? We got TJ Maxx. They're out with their numbers, I believe, tomorrow morning. We'll jump over to the Analyze tab, pull up the Earnings tab, May 19th, $72 stock. Talking about a $3.23 move priced in, not too big of a move priced in uh, for the week. We're talking about implied volatility of $3.81, so about a 5% move on their numbers for TJ Maxx tomorrow morning. This stock has had quite a run, more than double this price from the COVID lows. We'll put it back on a daily. Let's put it on a five-year and then zoom in just to see the full run we got on a daily basis. It's been quite an uptrend channel, folks. We were just trading at $60 almost on March 4th, $61.15. We're up about 20%. In TJ Maxx, we're up about a half a percent coming into their numbers tomorrow before the bell. And what else do we have? We got TJ Maxx, we got Lowe's, Target. And as I mentioned, what do we got? We got about a 5% move priced into Lowe's, give or take. 5% move priced into TJ Maxx. And uh, Target, pretty similar action. So 5% seems to be the number, and you can understand why that would be the number when even a company like Walmart that crushes it out of the park is only trading 3.7% in the positive right now. Macy's crushed it out of the park, trading up less than three-tenths of a percent right now, and Home Depot up only six-tenths percent after crushing it out of the park. I don't know how you get one of these equities trading up five to 10% if the numbers that they all put up only mean that if they're lucky, they're up three to 4% on their earnings numbers. All right, let's jump around to some of the other stories I got up here that I'm looking at this morning. Let's see, where are we going to start at? Um, I mean, just to, to reiterate, right, you got fund managers saying the long Bitcoin is the most crowded trade in the world. Quite a pullback. I got friends chatting about this morning, just talking about anecdotal data. But we'll zoom in on Bitcoin. Um, that Fibonacci retracement is not in play anymore, as in we're below that. You could see what a 1 to 1, 6, 1, 8 maybe retracement would look like. But let's remove that just for clarity on this chart for a movement. There's two of them over each other. Uh, 43,635. I mean, geez, you're in the ballpark, folks, of, you know, we might get a 50% retracement of the entire price of Bitcoin, which would just be $10,000 below where we're trading at right now. Folks, this is a daily chart. May 13th, let's go back a, a, a full six days, folks. Six days ago, Bitcoin was trading at 58,000. Didn't take much more than an Elon tweet or two to drop it to 43,000. You're now bumping up against this area, which is 42,730, the high of January 8th. I believe we got down below there at 42,445. We got down there today and yesterday on the chart of Bitcoin. And again, putting this back on a three-year weekly, you really see a run. I mean, where do you start this thing, right, in terms of figuring out any type of a pullback? Even talking about putting a retracement number on here, and it's a tough one, folks, because this has been just a straight shot in no direction. But you could say the run started in September at about 10,000. You're below that 382, right? 618 is about 31,000, which will correlate to the lows we had back in January. Or you could be a little bit more conservative, but these are going to be big numbers, as in after our pullback, you go from 28,000 up to 65, and you're at about a 618 of about 42,895. Nonetheless, there's not much reason fundamentally right now to be a buyer in Bitcoin with the type of volatility and risks that this market faces. There's no reason why Bitcoin's trading at 43,000. It can still be the cryptocurrency default of the future and trade at $32,000, folks. They're kind of arbitrary levels. Yes, as demand is increased, the price will rise. But it's bubblicious is the point when you rise up to 65,000 and in a heartbeat, Elon tweets that they might sell their Bitcoin and you're down to 43,000. Just be careful. Um, Bitcoin's going to be around. It's going nowhere. But arbitrary levels, it's still going to be around if it's trading at 10,000. I mean, many years ago, only a couple years ago, right? Now, I have to go back. I think this takes us. That doesn't take us. Let's go to the five-year weekly. This takes us to the entire run that futures have been open. 
I mean, folks, at COVID lows, you were trading at 4,000. If you said Bitcoin was trading at 20,000, you'd be happy as a clam, right? Even coming into COVID, you were trading at 10,000. Um, keep that in mind when you look at these Bitcoin. A lot of people want exposure, rightfully so, but we're in some lofty levels. You don't have to be a charting genius to see that potentially that's a parabolic run. And guess where the bottom of that parabola is? $10,000. Let's see if it completes on the right side. Maybe a little Basil Chapman. Um, symmetry formation stay tuned folks i'll be right back to finish up the show sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument you have to practice sure but you also need excellent instruction from experts at tfnn you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis and it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Markets can rise and fall like the tides. Subscribe to Basil Chapman's newsletter, The Opening Call, and you too can ride the wave. Basil Chapman is an authority in technical analysis. His Chapman Wave trading system has been helping traders identify trends and capitalize on momentum in the markets since 1984. TFNN invites you to test Basil's proprietary Chapman Wave trading methodology with a monthly subscription to the opening call newsletter for only $149. Your subscription to the opening call comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee, as well as daily market updates on key indexes, stocks, and commodities. Ride the wave. Sign up for the opening call risk-free today. Introducing Primal Edge. Today, it's even more important to take a supplement that complements your health. Primal Edge is specifically formulated to boost your immune system and help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Our early ancestors found all their nutritional requirements in the wild environment. But today our food sources don't contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients that we need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based, vitamins, minerals, fatty and amino acids in an easy to use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated humic and fulvic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They've been called miracle molecules because like sunlight, air and water, without them life cannot exist. That's right, Ellen. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every morning. morning. Primal Edge, just $89 exclusively at tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. I got a chart of AT&T up here and quite a reversal of fortunes. In terms of yesterday, they announced the deal that uh, AT&T, they're going to spin off their media empire, combine it with Discovery, create its own company, a Discovery up like 17%. Now, put this thing on a weekly, and man, you don't see many bars like that. Not a good bar in there for sure. Uh, AT&T, Discovery, I dabbled a little bit in that equity, getting into it when it had traded lower. Not the move you want there either, folks, on a weekly. It's just quite a demise. Now, putting it back on a daily, just even see, boy, that bar yesterday, pretty sure that's a bearish engulfing in terms of the entire trend that we have going back to almost April 14th. You trade from a high yesterday, even the open, uh, 39.24, we reach a high yesterday of 39.70. This morning, we're trading at 32.41, but that doesn't even do justice. You had a high print. Now, the bar, 
whoops, let's back it out, on a daily basis, was trading under 40, but pre-market discovery, 42.81, okay? So that's not incorporated when you see these daily bars. 42.81, that bar was up to here, is really what that red bar would look like if you had pre-market action in terms of where it took back. It took back everything all the way back to basically April 8th. They're down another 3.9%. It's a strong company, but you're getting into the details now. We'll end the program with this one. A really interesting write-up in terms of on um, Bloomberg talking about AT&T named Columbus started with a text. So this started back in February. I said yesterday, in interested to see how this happened. What they didn't get into in this article yet is how were the negotiations impacted when things collapsed completely with the stock of discovery because they started chatting about it back in february i'm trying to get the exact date they had basically uh yeah so there was normally an annual golf tournament at pebble beach that the ceos would get together and see each other that got canceled because of covid so during covid during a weekend in february you had the discovery ceo send a text to the AT&T CEO that sparked a conversation that was in February and then about a couple weeks ago they turned that deal over to their deal making team they got it done but in the meantime I mean discovery look at where this thing was back in February so look at what happened during their negotiations you went from 45 to 78 and back to 32 nonetheless lower today thanks so much folks for tuning in stay tuned Basil Chapman he's live up next live programming all day at TFNN have a great Tuesday, everybody.